Here's a great looking animated 3D scene created entirely using Microsoft PowerPoint. In this video, we'll show how this scene is animated mostly using morph transitions. We'll also look at the components of the 3D model. The model is not very hard to build, so we'll only go over the individual parts in detail. Drawing, assembling, and formatting the 3D model parts are easy, so we won't go through the detailed steps. Scene Overview The looping scene involves simple partial turns animated using morph transitions. We're using seven slides to create this scene. The opening slide and the ending slide are the same. This creates a continuous seamless loop when the sequence is run repeatedly. To create the effect of the lights turning on and off, we set the transition to none. So, we use morph only for some transitions, and not for all slide transitions. Next, we'll look at the construction of the 3D model. We'll use the selection pane to look at the inner workings of the model. First, note that everything is combined in a single group called, scene. As we like to recommend, everything in the 3D scene that moves together should be grouped together. There are exceptions, like when animating complex and advanced scenes. We won't get into that in this lesson. In the 3D rotation setting, note that the scene group is set to the perspective rotation preset. This renders the model in perspective projection. We get proper perspective scaling of all components of the model as we rotate it. Objects that are near appear larger. Objects appear smaller as they move farther away. Inside the scene group, we find three subgroups called set 1, set 2, and set 3. And as you can see, the parts inside these subgroups are named exactly the same. This is because the sets are duplicates of an original reference set. To make the sets look different from one another, we customize some parts of the sets. We change the colors of some elements. We also change the Z positions of each set. When the scene rig is ungrouped we can see that each set is rotated differently. Next, notice that this model is designed vertically. All the components are drawn from the top view like drawing a map. Now let's look at the design of a single lamp post rig. The rig consists of 10 vector objects. There are 7 lamp parts grouped together in a subgroup called, lamp. There are 3 base parts as shown. The stone surface object is made from smaller 2D freeform shapes. These small shapes were combined into a single freeform shape using the Union Shapes tool. All other parts of the lamp are circles. Pretty cool, right? Here's a view of the 3D model showing the Z positions of the components in the form of their original 2D shapes, without applying any 3D bevels and depths. The main feature of our lamp post rig is the 3D light cone. This is the beam of light that shines from the light source onto the ground. It's made from a 2D circle, just like most of the other model parts. We can turn the lamp on, or off, by showing or hiding the shape in the selection pane. We can adjust its intensity or brightness by modifying its fill color. Four material presets work best for creating the light cone. The rest of the material presets add too much shadows and highlights that make it look less like a light beam. Use the powder or translucent powder material presets to create the most intense light beams. This is especially useful when emulating a spotlight in a misty or foggy environment. For less intense or less bright light beams, use the flat or matte material presets. With these presets, we have finer control over the light by adjusting the transparency level. For brighter light beams, lower the transparency level. And for softer lights, increase the transparency level. Use the gradient fill for even better results. Use a radial gradient preset to create a balanced shine. 
Add gradient stops as needed. Then set the transparency levels of each gradient stop. Awesome. Lastly, note that the flat material preset is the best setting for the glass component. We've revealed the secrets of our lamp post rig. We hope you'll be able to apply these techniques in your PowerPoint creations. Here are several ideas that you can try to improve the lamp post rig. If you have the full version of the turntable animator, you can animate your lamp post scene with a full 360 degree turnaround animation. Let us know in the comments if you need help replicating any of these advanced scenes. Need reference files to speed up your learning? Head on over to our website and grab the free 3D lamp post rig file for your reference. If you're really serious about learning to create 3D illustrations and animations using PowerPoint, check out our online course, The Beginner's Guide to Creating PowerPoint 3D Models. The course includes stunning and advanced reference PowerPoint 3D models and scenes. Until next time, happy creating!